This episode has been brought to you by FlowState, the unlimited Webflow development service. Find out more at flowstate.dev. Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing with Webflow. After the recent announcement of some amazing new features with regards to Webflow, Webflow Conf 2023, I thought I'd run through basically what is available to you now, how to use it, and give you some sort of insight into it. So what we're gonna do is actually look into the spline integration, which is the easiest thing to implement uh, of them all, really. I'm not an expert on spline at all. Um, I don't know how to use it, but we will go through kind of how to export it from, export your scene from spline, import it into Webflow, and add some interactions so you can then begin to manipulate your 3D scene. So jumping into Spline here, this is just a, um, a default kind of library file that I took from Spline. I did not create this. Uh, if you know how to use 3D software, you could probably create something a lot better. But what you're gonna wanna do is go into Export here, and if you click on Viewer, and if you click on Viewer, you'll get basically a URL here. So if I copy that, take that, in fact, if we could copy it all, um, and update, click update this will publish it I presume to some sort of public URL and now if we go into Webflow and what you can do is add a new spline scene object here and you're going to want to paste the URL into into this you could probably do a much better job at getting the URL just the URL and if we hit enter now we've got our scene and you can create you know, make, make this full screen in fact let's just do that right now um, let's do position absolute and then make the bad boy full screen so there we go that is, it's as simple as that um, if you I've said this in my 3gs series but the trick is to have a floating or a fixed position 3d scene behind a normal page to so build your page out as you would normally have the, have the HTML running down the page, and then you'll have a fixed position scene behind it, and you'll do all the magic like that. It's a bit of a trick of, of the eye. That's the way I think about it anyway. But now we've got this. Let's add an interaction to start moving some of these elements. So if we could element trigger and mouse move over element, and then create a new mouse move. Now, I think there's a bub bug it feels a bit buggy at the moment so what you're going to want to do is go down to integrations and spline and you actually select what object you want to to move so let's see if we can let's move the camera let's see what that does so there's a bug here as well where it keeps closing so if we move the x on the camera you can see look things are happening it's wonderful and then if we say where it ends up Looks like we need to just click the camera here, wherever it is, it's camera two. And then turn on the preview. You'll see that we're actually manipulating that camera. Again, I think there's a bug going on uh, in here somewhere, but I think you get the picture. You're able to then move a bunch of stuff. So let's just move, I don't know, let's uh, get this, uh, I saw a lamp somewhere. Let's move the lamp, pop that up there. Spline, lamp, camera two, just double check the camera two, this thing, cool. So we've got the lamp here. Let's just again, see how you move the lamp all over there. I don't know, it's stupid really, but um, and a case of moving the lamp all the way over there. If we preview that, you see that the lamp is now moving as well. So really simple that's about it and uh, it makes working with 3d so much more easier providing you know how to use spline and create things in spline before you go why don't you check out the companion video on css variables where i teach you how to use css variables but i hope you enjoyed this one uh, like subscribe join my discord and until next time happy no coding mm -hmm.